Hello statistics students, my name is Jamie Amy and this video is our discussion on section 4.1, uh, starting out chapter 4 that is, on probability, and section 4.1 is on the basic concepts of probability. Alright, let's start by seeing how much you know about probability already. Express the indicated degree of likelihood as a probability value. There is a 40% chance of rain tomorrow. As a probability, do you think that would be the 40% would be expressed as A, B, C, or D? If you said C, nice job, you are correct. Uh, take any percentage, move the decimal place two times to the left, and you have your corresponding probability. There are some rules for the probability values that we'll need to follow. First, always express the probability as a fraction in lowest terms or as a decimal, not as a percent. Okay. Next, all probabilities are between 0 and 1 inclusive. That inclusive means your probability could be 0 and it could be 1 or anywhere in between. Um, I like to think of it as the percentages go from 0% to 100%. So if you were to change these to decimals, it'd be um, between 0 and 1. So all probabilities will be between 0 and 1 inclusive. The probability of an impossible event is 0. Think 0% 0 chance, so probability is 0. The probability of an event uh, that is certain to occur is 1. Think of 100% chance as a decimal is 1. Give exact answers unless you are asked to approximate. Um, so since a lot of our answers are decimals between the values of 0 and 1, um, there will be times when you're going to ask yourself, should I round or approximate? So just make sure to look at your directions clearly. If they don't ask you to approximate, then you need to make sure to give an exact answer. Note that the earlier in a problem that you round, the less accurate your final answer will be. Therefore, therefore if asked to round or approximate, you want to hold off rounding for as long as possible. And those are our rules we need to follow when expressing a probability. Okay, if you see a capital A open, I'm sorry, a capital P open parentheses, capital A close parentheses like that, it's not multiplication like you might think of from an algebra class. What that means is um, it denotes the probability of event A occurring. So here it is again, the probability of uh, event A occurring, and it is equal to a fraction. The numerator will be the number of times that A actually occurred, and the denominator will be the number of times the procedure was repeated. I like to think of it as the probability that event A will occur is equal to the number of successes divided by the number of possibilities. So let's look at an example. What is the probability of randomly selecting one student from this class who is wearing a hat? Wow, okay, this is my first time doing this um, example uh, via the internet or um, a video and not face to face. So um, the way we would write that is capital P open parentheses and the word hat. So someone wearing a hat is the simple event we're addressing and that would equal uh, the numerator would be the number of us who are wearing hats right now in this class. Um, I would normally look around the room and count, but uh, at this point I would maybe do a survey and ask you guys how many of you are wearing hats, and that number would be my numerator, and then I would divide by the total number of students. And that is how we get a probability of, um, the probability value of how many students are wearing a hat. All right, uh, let's try another example. When three children are born, the sample space looks like this here. If you guys remember from your intermediate algebra class, uh, set notation, 
That's these squiggly brackets like this. So inside of those brackets is our set, our sample space. So here we have um, lowercase b representing a baby boy and lowercase g representing a baby girl. And so BBB would represent three babies are born and in order it goes boy, 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 then boy, boy, girl, then boy, girl, boy, then boy, girl, 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 boy, boy, girl, boy, girl, <laughs> two girls and then a, a baby boy. And last is if you have all three girls, like my mom did. So notice that there are eight possible outcomes listed in the sample space. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight possible outcomes. All right, so eight is going to be our denominator in this question here. Assuming that boys and girls are equally likely, find the probability of getting three children of all the same gender. Okay. So we denote that as capital P, open parentheses, three children of all the same gender, close parentheses, equals, and it's going to be a fraction. Our denominator of eight comes from the total number of possibilities, and our numerator of two comes from the number of successes. Whatever is written inside the parentheses is considered a success. So three children of the same gender. So we had a success right here with boy, 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 and a success right here with girl, girl, girl. So that is two successes. So that's why it's two out of eight. Uh, we would want to reduce that to one over four, or we could um, change it to a decimal because 0 0.25 is an exact um, decimal. If it's a fraction like one third that you would have to round off, if, if converted to a decimal to like 0.33, that's fine if the directions request you to do so. All right, I'd like you to pause this video and try this example on your own. Welcome back. If you selected C, you got it right. Nice job. Uh, if you got it wrong, let me um, walk you through it. Hopefully you can find where you're going wrong. Uh, the bag contains six, I'm working on the denominator here, six red marbles, three blue, and seven. So that's the total number there on the bottom. If a marble is randomly selected from the bag, what is the probability that it is blue? So probability of blue, so what's in parentheses is considered a success. Remember that, okay? Probability of blue is three. 3 out of, what is this here, 16, would be considered a success. Yep, which is 3 out of 16. Okay, if you didn't get it right, hopefully you see where you went wrong. I'm going to have to erase my work there real quick so we can see this note on the law of large numbers. And that is, as a procedure is repeated again and again, the relative frequency, probability, of an event tends to approach the actual probability. Okay, that's the law of large numbers. All right, I would like you to again pause this video and try these three examples. Welcome back, grade your own work. Here we go, number one, if you put zero Nice job. The probability of an impossible event is zero. Think 0% zero chance if you need to. And 0% switch to a decimal is zero. Number two, if you put one out of 121, approximately 0 0.008, you got it right. So let's walk through this one together. A sample space consists of 121 separate events. So that is your denominator and each of the events are equally likely. What is the probability of each event? So this is where it gets tricky. They didn't say what's the probability of one event occurring. They said each event, so you have to interpret that as, or translate that to the number one. So each event has a one in 121 chance of occurring. Now if you take out a calculator or you do long division, typing in or calculating one divided by 121, round to the nearest thousandths. That's where we get the 0 0.008 from. 
Okay, last one. If you put 0 0.445, you got it right. Nice job. And the work is here for you to see if you got it wrong or if you just want to um, write the full solution. Capital P, texting while driving, equals... Numerator is 3,785, denominator 8,505. And we uh, gave our answer accurate to three decimal places because it said to do so in the directions. Okay, identifying significant results with probabilities. So the rare event rule for inferential statistics is if under a given assumption, the probability of a particular observed event is very small and the observed event occurs significantly less than or significantly greater than what we typically expect with, that, with the previous assumption, we conclude that the assumption is probably not correct. That is the rare event rule. All right, let's break that down a little. If the probability of that event is less than 0 0.05, then you can conclude that is unlikely to occur. What I want you to really get out of this is probabilities less than 0 0.05 are unlikely to occur. Um, you could think of it as a percent if you want to. If I move this decimal twice back, making it into a percent, that would be 5%. So if an event has a 5% or less chance of occurring, you would call that unlikely, okay? And that's going to uh, remain constant. That's not going to change for each problem. So remember that number, 0 0.05, or remember it as 5% if that's easier, but then convert it to a probability or its corresponding decimal. All right, and that will conclude our discussion on section 4.1. My name is Jamie Amy. Thanks for joining me. See you next time for our discussion on section 4.2.